Now for our second concept example, uh, let's imagine a tech company called Tech Guru Inc. is looking to hire a software developer. They receive hundreds of applications and need to decide whom to interview and eventually hire. To manage this, they set up a multi-stage process that resembles the layers of a neural network. And so, in order to be able to understand more, we always know that a neural network is going to have three, three components to it. We got the input, one or more, hit. Uh, we got the layers, then we have the output, respectively, and also as well, for all the neurons that we have, as indicated by our formula as usual, we're going to have weights, biases, activation function, And afterwards, an optimizer or optimizing algorithm. And so, in order to resemble the whole components of the hiring process, this is what we will go over. So we always have the input layer, which could be represented as a resume screening. Then we have hidden layer one, hidden layer two, Hidden layer three, an output layer, respectively. So one could be the phone interview, then the next part is technical assessment. Hidden layer will be the on-site interview. Finally, the output layer is the hiring decision based on the pattern. And so the input layer uh, refers to the initial screen of application serves um, each neuron in this layer represents a crate uh, criterion such as years of experience, programming languages known, education level, and so on. We focus on our features. To filter. Just as neurons in a neural network take various input features, uh, the HR team reviews these aspects on each re resume to decide if an applicant proceeds to the next round. This is similar to input neurons, uh, processing features and passing the information forward. And for the hidden layer, the first one, uh, which is the phone interview, applicants who pass the screening are then given a phone interview, which represents the first hidden layer. In this round, the HR team probes deeper, asking about past project experiences, problem solving skills, and team collaboration. Each neuron, indicated as an interviewer, may focus on a different skill set, activating only if the applicant's response exceeds a certain threshold. So, activating a specific neuron with respect to a specific threshold. And it's akin to uh, the activation function in neural networks that decide whether the signal is strong enough to be passed on, much like the signal. Much like the activation.
activation function. Then the second hidden layer uh, refers to a technical assessment where a smaller group that succeeds in the funding interview moves on to the technical assessment. This stage serves as the second hidden layer where candidates coding abilities are tested, they're given a set of programming problems and their solutions are evaluated for logic, efficiency, and creativity. Here the neurons are the different problems assessing the various aspects of the applicant's technical uh, acumen. Then for the third hidden layer, uh, which is the on-site interview. The very best candidates are invited to an on-site interview, uh, the hidden layer for the um, where they meet multiple team members. Uh, they are assessed for cultural fit, team dynamics, and communication skills, like a neural network that abstracts and refines information layer by layer. Uh, the interviewers synthesize a broader picture of each candidate's potential fit for the role. Well, so, so the third one, Uh, neural networks abstract and refine information and finally for the output layer which would be considered the hiring process um, and hiring decision uh, the final stage, considered the output layer, uh, is when the company decides which candidate or candidates uh, are extended an offer. The neurons in this layer integrate all the information processed from previous layers, the results from the interview assessment and initial resume screening to activate a hiring uh, decision. So, the grand finale. Finale for decision, accumulate the all data from neurons for output and minimized loss function. And then through this process, just like the neural network, each stage refines the, pool, uh, refines the pool of candidates and the activation functions could be thought of as benchmarks or cutoff points for deciding if a, a candidate advances to the next stage or not, since every single layer is going to have to consider an activation function. Since we, if we go over a formula, we always know that every single neuron is multiplied with the activation function. So, for example, the requirement might be um, at least five years of experience to pass the resume screening in the input uh, layer, or a minimum coding test score to move on to the uh, from the technical assessment to move on to the next layer, and so on and so forth. And these thresholds help uh, filter out candidates at each layer, similar to how activation functions filter out signals that are too weak to contribute to accurate predictions. So, activation functions. filter out weak signals to contribute to accurate predictions. And this multi-layer um, stepwise filtering process closely mirrors how a neural network operates with each layer making decisions based on the output of the previous layer, ultimately leading to the final outcome for the decision. Uh, it's a system designed to handle complex decision making by breaking it down into simpler uh, sequential equations. And so if we were to go over our whole overview between how this would already be set up. So one, let me see if I can just minimize this for side by side comparison, one second. There we go. Right. 
And so, initially what we have for our input, for our two, would actually be one, we already call upon libraries, Just to call upon neural networks we would add, and we assume that we have a data set where each applicant's resume is encoded into numerical features, where we have X equal to the applicant features, a matrix where rows are applicants and columns are features, skills, and experience. X applicants, yep. And Y equals features. Y is equal to features. Or remember that? Where Y in this case is considered hired or not. Where Y is considered hired. And Y is considered hired. Or not. And this will be considered a binary classification where we will have a binary vector where each element is one if the applicant was hired and zero otherwise. So we would have this function to be able to load the data. We would have a specific file name to load it, depending on what format we put it in. And then we are splitting uh, the data set into training and testing uh, to evaluate the model. So it looks like we're going to be doing an 80 20 split, where we're also calling upon second learn model selection to import the training test split. The libraries are pretty efficient to be able to do so. Um, so random state of 42, and we normalize the feature data in particular from what we are looking for and we are implementing uh, standard scalars to be able to fit and transform the data to be able to see exactly based on the features that we're getting from the applicant. We call upon a sequential model to build the network model and it looks like we have our layers that we have already set in place. We got our input, layer, hidden layers, And then we have our output layer. And when we have done so, we then compile the model. And it looks like we're using the atom optimizer. And for a loss function, we're using binary cross entropy to be able to predict the accuracy of the model. And then we summarize, summarize uh, the display for the model. And we train the model with application data to be able to fit in what we have already trained and scaled. Uh, based on hiring or not based on the following features. We're doing 100 epochs to be able to train the following model and fit. And we do a batch size of 32 with a verbose of sub one. Uh, we then evaluate the model's performance. Uh, and this could represent how well the hiring uh, process proceeds to job performance overall to be able to predict accuracy. And we make predictions with new applicants and new data as we've already called. So we have new applicant data that we will be calling to then forward in for a hiring decision process. Uh, so new applicant data should be uh, pre-processed in the same way as X-trained accordingly. And then we make a hiring decision for the model to predict new applicant data. Right over here, we make that hiring decision. We'll already be able to execute for model predict new applicant data. And so let me just zoom out of this. There we go. And feel free. Let me just move forward here for the coding uh, part that we've broken down. Feel free to take a screenshot of this. Feel free to take a screenshot on the right as well. And pause the video even to do so. And let me just move this. basics on understanding. 
There we go. And uh, also for the left as well. There we go. And now let's move on to our first practice problem. And so yeah, thank you very much for taking time to watch this. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to please like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put it in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.